My daughter used to write me letters. Dear Dad, I don't know what you did to get sent away, but I wish that you never did it. Was it my fault? Was it mom's fault? I wish I could turn back time. I love you no matter what. Love, Daddy's little girl. When you constantly have zero, when you and your little brother are eating Rice Krispie treats for dinner for two weeks in a row, when your phone is cut off and the only way someone can contact you is at the payphone across the street, what's the quickest way from point A to point B? It's to cheat. At the age of six, my Uncle Tony, who's one of my heroes, took me to a place called Choice City Boxing. My grandfather was a very hard man. You know, they got beat a lot. My grandmother got abused. I had an alcoholic stepfather that was very abusive to my mom. It would be hard for me to say what the worst part of my childhood was because a lot of it was pretty tough. I sold furniture and was very successful at that. And one day, a guy at work said, hey, Joe, you're black. Do you know where I can get some drugs? <laughs> and what he didn't realize is I was like the most square dude ever. Like I drank maybe twice a year. I was not in that scene at all. I said, no, but I know some people. So he said, great, I need 10 ecstasy pills. I'm not the brightest guy in the world, but I'm really good at simple math. And I realized that in 30 minutes, I made $100. And I said, I'm never selling another couch as long as I live. The guy started calling, and immediately I became an ecstasy dealer. I fancied myself a bit of a businessman. It was an illegal business. And then one day it all came falling down. I got to a point where I started getting into trouble with the law. So they would put me on probation and say, pay these fines, take these classes, and I just wouldn't do it. I wouldn't follow through. And they'd get me, put me back in jail, and we'd start the cycle all over again. And uh, that was the majority of my life until, you know, I got tossed into the Department of Corrections as an adult. I was recommended for a boot camp. And the first day we were there, we all had to stand on line, and the drill instructor's walking up and down the row and says, how many of you think you're a man? Raise your hand. Everyone raises their hand. How many of you have children? Almost every single dude raises their hand, including me. He says, you're in prison. Someone else is making sure that your kids are okay, so how dare you call yourself a man? Damn, he's right. I could have heard that message a year earlier and I wouldn't have thought anything of it. I'm like, forget this guy. What does he know? But when you have to call your children and tell them that you're getting sent to prison for five years, when you have to read letters from them in a cell by yourself, you start to realize that maybe I'm a little bit broken. And so I resolved to take what that gentleman had told me and how I was feeling in that moment and I started to change my ask. When I'm the kind of man that will never come back to prison, that's when I want to go home. I'd done extremely well at boot camp, and they were going to leave me out on probation, and I begged them not to. And I remember the drill instructor laughing and saying, I've never had anyone ask to go to a halfway house instead of being on probation, because probation, you're basically free. Just don't get in trouble. I said, you, can, you can't take me from all this structure and organization every day and leave me to my own devices. I'm not ready yet, and I'll come back here. Please put me in a halfway house. And they did. The first thing I did was call their mom. I said, can you please bring them to see me? I was still in intake, and I see my daughter and my son walk in, and my son is jumping up and down. Dad, dad, dad. And the lady that's helping, she looks over and she says, you know what? 
they're not allowed over here, but tell them to come on. It was like, like the best feeling in the world because I hadn't been living my life for them before. And I was so worried that I was gonna miss so much of their life. And I was grateful that I didn't have to. From there, I set out on the journey of finding a job. My job was finding a job. I would get up every day at 2.30. I'd walk the three and a half miles to Gibbs, work four to 12, walk the three and a half miles back to the halfway house, do my chores, sleep, eat, get up at five, walk the three miles to DP Doe, work until three in the morning, walk back to the halfway house. I was walking about 14 miles every single day between two $7 an hour jobs. And every morning when I was walking, I would think, I'm so happy to be walking to work right now. Yeah, it takes forever, and sometimes it's cold, and sometimes it's raining. But every step that I take is one step away from prison. And I'm okay with that. All you have to focus on is becoming better. I would read every day, work out, so when I came out, I didn't want to break those habits. Discipline was making sure that I worked out every single day, and it kept me out of trouble. It gave me something to focus on. My life just kept rolling from there. And then summer of 2016, I decided that I wanted to be my own boss. And that's how we got to Beautifully Savage. Beautifully Savage is the boxing fitness studio that I started in Fort Collins, Colorado. I feel that physical training, it was a way for me to feel good about myself because boxing is beautiful to watch two skilled fighters and have search for angles to land the perfect shot, courage, stamina. Those are the things that really matter, but those are also things that will make you successful in life. It's very humbling to me that a person who's made mostly the wrong choices in their life can still have the opportunity to start over and then create something that people are willing to support and get behind. I don't trust anyone who's never been punched in the face because when you get punched in the face, you learn something about yourself. You learn if you're the kind of person that's gonna cut and run or if you're gonna stand up and fight. I'm the type of person that fights.